Welcome back to another DaVinci Resolve tutorial here on my YouTube channel. For those who don't know me, my name is Sebastian and today we're talking about the most commonly used notes in DaVinci Resolve's color page. So with that being said, roll the intro, we'll see us on the color page. <coughs> So I'll try to pack this video full of information, but also make it as short as possible. So whenever you open up the color page, the first node you'll see is always a serial node. And what you're doing with a serial node is just the most common type of node. You use this for all basic kinds of stuff like your basic corrections and exposure, like balancing and whatever. So you can create this node by hitting Alt and S on your keyboard. If you're on a Mac, use Option S. And there you can go ahead and just label them. Like this is our exposure and there we do our, let's say balancing. So in the exposure, just go ahead and give it some contrast and then go to the balancing and give it some saturation to make it pop. So this is your basic node, this is your serial node. But now let's go ahead to our next node, which is the layer node or layer mixer. This is generally used to isolate selected parts by using qualifiers. Also use uh, composite mode to create special effects like the bleach bypass effect, which I'm not going to talk about in this video because it would, this would be too much. So in order to create a layer node, just right click on the last node and go to add node and add layer but this would add a layer below our balance node and that's not what we want to do so we'll create another serial node first all right so this is node 3 and there we hit alt and l or option l or right click and add node add layer node so the way layer nodes work is a little bit confusing because whatever is shown at the bottom is actually displayed on top. So this is like the wrong order. This is on bottom, in the middle and on top. So this would be the right order. But let's just keep it as it is. And there we can start isolating. Right? So as I said, this is generally used to isolate elements by using qualifiers. So right now I'll let's leave node 3 as is and go to node 4 and there we want to isolate our greens. So let's go to color, go to presets and six vector green. Right, so you see this has changed. If you don't see this, that's because the magic pen is turned off. But let's turn it on. Either you click this magic pen or you hit shift H on your keyboard to activate it. And what we want to do now is you see your selected greens. We want to make the selection range bigger. So right now we can just drag it in the viewport. Just drag it up until you've selected all your greens, right? So just like this. You see a little bit of yellow is selected as well, but that's fine. And let's say in node 5 we want to select our reds. So let's go ahead and go to color again. Go to node 5, go to color, go to presets and hit 6 vector red. So that means you're isolating your red part. The selection's quite good. So we don't have to change that at all. But what we want to do now is go to node 4, denoise it a little to make it clean and tidy the edges, but also blur so your edges won't be hard. Let's go ahead and make the same on our red selection. Let's go ahead, denoise it and give it a little bit of blur. And I can go ahead, go to my greens and really go to my offset on my primaries and just drag it down to give it a really nice green. So keep in mind, I'm over exaggerating things to make it really clear what I'm saying. And now go ahead, go to your reds and also take your offset, give it a little red bump like this. You can also go ahead and make it purple. Just for the sake of this tutorial, let me make it purple or magenta. So when you go to node 3 now, you see nothing has changed. 
right? As I said, this is at the bottom. This is not shown anything because I have to deactivate my selection first. So let's go ahead and hit Shift H to deactivate this magic pen. And you see now this has changed. So when you go to node 3 by now, and let's say you want to take out our saturation, what happens is node 3 knows it can take out the saturation of any part of the image except our uh, our selections which is the greens and the reds or magentas by now so let's go ahead and take out our saturation and you see everything except our greens and our magentas has changed so that's basically just the the blue part but that's fine so you get the point right so now that you know how layer mixer or layer nodes work Let's move on to our next node, which is the parallel node. So go ahead, go to this layer mixer icon and also hit Alt and S on your keyboard or Option S on your keyboard again. So let's first make clear what a parallel node is. A parallel node is generally used to blend in multiple corrections by using Windows or qualifiers. So what that means is let's say or let's first create our parallel node. So let's go ahead, go to this layer mixer and hit Alt and S to create a serial node. And now from there, we can go ahead and hit Alt and P to create a parallel parallel node. All right, you can see the difference by just watching these icons, right? So now you see this is the icon for the layer mixer and this is the parallel mixer. Right, let's make this smaller again. Actually a little bit bigger. All right. So let's say I want to qualify or I want to make the middle circle pop out a little more. So I'll go ahead, go to my power window and just drag this in to the size of our middle circle. So that's fine. I can soften this up a little bit and now what I can do is go to my curves and check if editable splines is on so right now it's off just click there and it's on so now click on your highlights and if I'll change this you see the middle circle this just makes it a little bit brighter so this makes it pop even more all right, let's say we're going with something like this. But let's go ahead, go to node 8. And let's say we want to create a vignette, just a typical vignette. So let's create another power window. Zoom out so we can see what we're working with. And let's make this bigger at first. So let's say something like this and then soften it out just a little bit and then make it fit again so what we want to do now is go ahead and invert it right now you see your selected part is the complete inside but we want to select our outside to make the vignette so now go ahead go to inverted then go to your curves and then go ahead uncheck editable splines this is really important and then go ahead to your curves, grab it in the middle and just drag it down and just watch the edges right here and right here what this does. So I'm going ahead and I just drag this down. So this makes it darker. And that's the general usage of the parallel node. What other nodes do we have? The next and last node for this tutorial is the outside node. And to create an outside node, just go ahead, right click, add node, and add outside node. So an outside node is pretty powerful because what it does is generally just inverting the selection of the previous node. So you see this, I make it bigger right now. So there you go. There's our classical vignette and node 10, which is our outside node, is the inverted selection so everything's selected except our vignetted part right and 
the best thing about the outside node is this key information that it passed through. So let's say I go to node 8, go to my window and just watch node 10 what happens right now. Let me drag my power window in node 8 to the left and you see the selection in node 10, uh, node 10 automatically changes. So you don't have to manually rearrange the selection in your next step, which is pretty good. So some of you might think, why not just use another serial node and make another vignette? So that's because, go to, or let me just create it. Right, go ahead, create another serial node, and then just make a power window. First of all, it's very hard to make it the same size as your last one, even if we soften it out like this, and then just make it fit again. So whenever I'm selecting my node 8, and I'll move the power window, watch it, node 10, this stays the same. So that's why you wanna you typically use the outside node. I should, let's delete this and add an outside node again. You see, this automatically creates the mask and it automatically passes through the key information. And let's say there we gave it a vignette in node 8 and in node 10, we can go ahead, go to curves, go to editable splines again, check this on and let's say we want to make it pop a little more. So then go to highlights. And if we turn this up, you see, just watch at the middle part here. This brightens up the image. So that's the typical usage of the outside node. But that's also the end of this tutorial. As I said, I try to keep this short as possible. So let's just go ahead and exposure and balance. These are our serial nodes, right? just basic nodes and then we go ahead. These are our layer mixers and these are the parallel nodes and this is our outside node. So once again, the difference between layer mixer and parallel mixer. Anytime you want to blend in multiple things by using windows or qualifiers, use the parallel mixer, these nodes and this icon. And anytime you want to isolate things such as colors or skin tones or whatever, go ahead and use the layer mixer. And that's basically it. So if this video was any helpful to you at all, please consider leaving a like. If you got any questions left, go ahead in the comment section and just ask me anything. I'll try to respond as soon as possible. But that's it for now. Hope you have a great day. See you in the next one. Bye.